Well, it's debate night, and Kamala Harris is terrified, which is why she's been hiding behind a teleprompter ever since the Democrats pulled the old switcheroo and forced old Joe out of the race. But tonight, she's going to finally actually have to answer some questions live on television, even though they're going to be softballs, most of them to her, but also questions and comments from Donald Trump. And so, of course, she's just going to lie constantly. She's been rehearsing her talking points for the last week. And even Bernie Sanders let the cat out of the bag that she's toning down her actual plans in hopes of appearing more moderate and not scaring off some of the uh, blue collar Democrats and some of the morons who they're hoping to dupe into voting for her. Described Vice President Kamala Harris as a progressive. She has previously supported Medicare for all. Now uh, she does not. She's previously supported a ban on fracking. Now she does not. These, Senator, are ideas that you have campaigned on. Do you think that she is abandoning her progressive ideals? No, I don't think she's abandoning her ideals. I think she's trying to be pragmatic and doing what she thinks is right in order to win the election. She's even pretending that she supports building the border wall now and that she wants to stop the influx of illegal immigrants because every decent idea that she's pretending to support she literally stole from Donald Trump. You only say what is untrue. You are a master falsifier. When somebody fact checks you, like a chameleon, you change your attire. Come along, a big fat liar. Come along, a big fat liar. Liar, liar, pants on fire. But not everyone in the media can bite their lip and keep their frustrations to themselves about Kamala, obviously, and strangely dodging any and all interviews with the media. Here is a host on CNBC, NBC's financial channel, which usually isn't very political, tries to just cover finance and the stock market and business and things. Technically, if you care, stands for the Consumer News and Business Channel. But here's one of their hosts who... Uh, I think obviously is not drinking the Democrat Kool-Aid. I think she's been crystal clear on her values, what she wants to fight for and how she will. She's the Kool-Aid drinker, (laughs) obviously. Do it. And also, you know, she talks to people, right? She's reaching out to me. She's reaching out to businesses. She hasn't talked to the press, Gina. I mean, yeah, I know. I, I know you're a surrogate. But the American people are frustrated. The media is frustrated that the amount of access anyone's gotten to her for the past 41 days. I know you've seen that. We're finally going to have a debate tomorrow night because she sat down for one interview that was taped and then cut down and certain little things came out from it. But it has been a master class in avoiding any questions and nothing's been made clear by her. Maybe it's been made clear in dribs and drabs from her policymakers when it comes out in print or, or on, uh, off a teleprompter at one of her, her scripted speeches. She's been impossible to pin down on anything because she hasn't given any access. The American people deserve it. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. And I, you know, I don't, I hear you. I hear you, but Kamala obviously is a complete moron. And so the campaign is going to do the best that they can to just keep her on the teleprompter and avoid any questions, no matter how friendly they may be from the Mockingbird media. And despite them working overtime to gaslight the American people and trying to convince them that she's the most qualified and brilliant political mind to come out of the Democrat Party in generations, many of the establishment folks, the Democrats and the neocons who obviously support her, are very concerned that the propaganda just isn't working. Here's Bill Kristol saying... distressing, depressing, alarming after everything, after January 6th, after clear evidence a second term would be far more authoritarian than the first, after the ever-increasing radicalization of MAGA world, Trump now has more support than he had in 2016 or 2020. Joy Reid, the angry black woman over on MSNBC, is particularly upset that so many black people are not supporting Kamala and instead are on the Trump train. Donald Trump isn't trying to win more voters, guys. He's he's just trying to convince the voters he already has to not allow a non-white woman to become president while picking off some minority voters who might be open to a campaign message that's anti-immigrant, anti-woman, 
and pro-billionaire as well. And that strategy appears to be working, if you look at the polls, which remain essentially tied. <laughs> Tens of millions of Americans, our fellow Americans, want to go back to that era. They do not want to move on. They want to go back. Yes. It makes no sense to me, and probably not to you either. But that is reality. Yes, that is reality. And David Hogg, one of the prominent Generation Z anti-gun activists, who was one of the Parkland kids who built his career through social media after that tragedy, trying to repeal the Second Amendment, says that he hopes that he's wrong, but... If the Democrats lose in November, he thinks that the main reason will be the number of young men of all races. He knows how kind of inclusive he has to be. He doesn't want to just blame the black men for leaving the Democrat Party. He says that are no longer Democrats. There's been a taboo about talking about this because we understandably are hesitant to make men a main point of conversation, given we have been for thousands of years. What an absolute sissy boy. We have been the real problem to deal with at this point with 60 days to go. There isn't much we can do to recover it other than turning out more young women and trying to slow the departure of young men. So finally, young men's natural instincts are overriding the propaganda and the chemical poisoning that they've been experiencing their entire lives and are realizing that the Democrat Party and that liberalism is, well, I mean, a mental disorder, but... Not for them. The Jewish anti-racism activist Tim Wise has narrowed down the problem even further, saying that the only reason Trump might win is because of white people, not because the media is too timid, he goes on to say, or any other reason. Blame white people. Be brave, white liberals, and admit it. Our people, he says, are the enemy. Now, reject whiteness and embrace humanity. It's easy if you try. By the way, this is not a parody account. He really is a Jewish anti-racism activist, and he's being 100% serious here. It wasn't that long ago that the Democrats and the media were concerned that Kamala Harris was so unlikable that they considered swapping her out as old Joe's running mate back when the media was actually still able to prop up old Joe before his embarrassing emperor has no clothes moment during the debate against Donald Trump. This was them just a few months ago. I want to play this clip from Anderson Cooper's show last night where he interviewed former Speaker Pelosi. Take a listen. No, is, is, is Vice President Kamala Harris the best running mate for this president? He thinks so, and that's what matters. Do you think she is the, the best running mate, though? She's the Vice President of the United States. So when people say to me, well, why isn't she doing this or that? I said, because she's the Vice President. That's the job description. You don't do that much. <laughs> Not exactly a ringing endorsement. Do you think Vice President Kamala Harris is the best running mate for President Biden? And what do you make of Speaker Pelosi's answer there? I mean, there didn't seem to be anything wrong uh, with that answer. Obviously, um, President Biden, Vice President Harris, Speaker Pelosi, for that matter, all of us have been laboring under just a deluge of propaganda, disinformation, and criticism by the MAGA right. You it's been so tough for them to have the entire liberal media industrial complex in their pocket. The mainstream news networks, Hollywood celebrities, the big tech platforms, academia, big business, all the Fortune 500 networks, all in their pocket. It's us pesky little YouTubers on the MAGA right, which are causing the American people to doubt that Kamala Harris has what it takes. You, you are doing what Speaker Pelosi did, which is not answering the question. Do you think Kamala Harris is the best running mate for President Biden. Is it? Well, well obviously, she, she gave the right answer. That's President Biden's choice. It's just a simple question. Do you think Kamala Harris is the best running mate for President Biden? You've said she's excellent. That's farther than Speaker Pelosi went. But do you think she's the best? I'm not trying to throw anything into turmoil. I, I actually think it's a pretty simple question. Do you think Kamala Harris is? That's the fourth time he's asking that question. And you got to give Jake Tapeworm some credit because he occasionally does still remember that when he was younger, he actually had dreams of being a real journalist before he ended up signing his contract in blood with CNN. I sure am looking forward to her trying to explain this to the American people, a plan which she once so proudly bragged about with her friends over on The View 
which obviously has backfired and is now leading to a lot of missing pets in Springfield, Ohio. Starting with our administration, we gave TPS, temporary protected status, to Haitian migrants, 55,000. And then more recently, we extended temporary protected status to over 100,000 Haitian migrants for that very reason. That reason being the plan to destroy the United States by allowing an invasion of tens of millions of illegal aliens and then getting them all on welfare, on the government dole, to collapse the financial system so that the Marxist Democrats can then give birth to their communist utopia that they have been planning since the, well, at least the 1960s, with the Cloward Piven strategy. Subscribe to my channel if you're new here, by the way, and check back on a regular basis. And no, I'm not going to plug any of my merch, any of my shirts from, you know, where, or any of my books. Instead, I'm ending this video with what we call in YouTube world a call to action to subscribe. And I need to build up my subscribers. I need to hit that magical 2 million mark. Obviously, my channel is shadow banned, so the videos don't show up in the up next or recommended section. And so in the YouTube world, there is a tactic to just ask people to subscribe because there is a certain percentage of viewers who aren't already subscribed, who come to the channel by people sharing the links. Thank you very much for posting them on your social media. And something interesting happens when you do ask people to subscribe then it does up the subscriber count. But I'm not going to be one of those annoying YouTubers. Subscribe, like, comment, share, favorite, check out the merch, blah, blah, blah. I'll try to limit the plugs or the calls to action to one topic per video. So stay tuned and I will see you soon.